Thank you for listening to Discovering the Scriptures with Dr. Peter John Parisis. Currently, we're in Daniel chapter 7, verse 15. Reading first from the King James Bible. Quote, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Now let's read this verse in context. That is Daniel chapter 7, verse 15, going through chapter 18. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. The, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Unquote. Now let's relook at this verse that we're looking at. Daniel 7, verse 15. Let's read it now in the Young's Little Translation. Quote, Perceived hath been my spirit, I, Daniel, in the midst of the sheath and the visions of my head troubled me. Unquote. Now, I want to go ahead and look at this in the ESV version. Quote, As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious, and the visions of my head alarmed me. I really feel today that we should go into prayer and seek the Lord out on this here to see what we can get out of it. Let's pray. Father, we rely on the Holy Spirit to teach us our teacher, the scriptures and everything else in our life. Help us to hear him and be obedient to him. Help us to submit ourselves as Jesus did and to follow his leading and to please you and to be more like Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you for praying for us for the things that we cannot pray for. Jesus, thank you for making petitions to the Father while you sit at his right side. And Father, thank you for your mercy and your greatness for listening and for giving us mercy and kindness. We need your help now to have wisdom to understand these prophecies. And we need to have faith, love, patience, and mercy towards one another and to pray for one another. Help us to be calm, but to be insightful and to meditate upon these words and grant us each as we do so through the day and night. Wisdom, spiritual wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We ask this all in Jesus Christ's name. Please speak with us now. You need more time, hit the pause button. I always give time after my prayers, try to anyways, to let the Lord speak with me, because that is how it's properly done. When you're in front of kings and queens, you don't make your petition and walk out. That would be extremely rude. If they had the authority, they could chop off your head. So, always give God the same kind of respect. Now let's go ahead and look at what we have here. Now, one of the things in Bible studies that you want to take and look at the author and what he has written and what has been written in the same language, and since we're still in the Aramaic, that's going to leave Daniel, and see if we can make sense of what he's using. The word, the visions, he has used before in Daniel 2.1 and 2.3 and Daniel 4.5. Let's read them. King James Version, quote, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Unquote. Daniel 2, 3. Quote, and the king said unto him, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Unquote. Daniel 4, 5. Quote, I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Unquote. So as we can see, he is using this vision that he had. And let's read the verse that we're looking at. 
Quote, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Unquote. Now, let's take a look at how Daniel approached this. Daniel 7, verse 1, quote, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Unquote. Daniel 7, 2, quote, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. Unquote. Doesn't it seem like Daniel 7, 1, someone has given us a summary of what Daniel is writing, and now that Daniel himself wrote it? Because if you look at it, it said, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream. Why would Daniel talk about himself like that if he's writing in first person? I think this was a summary written by someone to let us know what's in this chapter. Who wrote it? We don't know. But it does summarize very well what's going on. But let's take a look now in the verse that we're looking at. Quote, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Unquote. Was this a dream or was this a vision? Well, we were already told in the first verse that he had dream and visions. So this one, he seems to be awake. He seems to be completely awake when he had these visions in his head. And they were so great that they troubled him. How can you not see the Son of Man coming before God in a great procession of the clouds with everyone around going to the Ancient of Days. God. And then God granted him all the dominion and glory and kingdoms and all the people and nations and languages that they will serve him. His dominion will last forever, not pass away, not be destroyed. Now, what kind of kingdom is that? Remember, Daniel was alive during Nebuchadnezzar. He saw the great conquering that took place with Nebuchadnezzar, and he became a slave. He saw the whole demolishing of Israel from Nebuchadnezzar, and here he is, someone greater than Nebuchadnezzar. And it troubles him, because he's seen the last days, the end times, the prophecies. Why would this not trouble you as an individual when you see something so great and mighty? Now, we do want to look at this. Daniel was grieved in his spirit, in the midst of his body, and the visions of his head troubled him. He was awake. He's telling us, I did not dream, dream. This is not a dream or a nightmare. I was awake, and I saw these visions. It's very important. It's not a nightmare you can pass off. He was awake during this that he saw. What is this going to do for us? What are we going to do with it? Will we be troubled in the end times? Probably. Daniel was, and he was considered by God to be one of the greatest spiritual, smartest men to live. And yet he was troubled. So what should be our position? Should we be troubled? I'm going to relate something to you. When I was a young Christian, years ago, I was in my 40s. And I heard that there was a stigmatist, a living grandfather, which baffled the Catholic Church, a living grandfather who bore the, the wounds of Jesus when he was crucified on the cross. Whether you believe in that or not, that's not for me to be bothered with. But I'm telling you what happened and what I saw. A man, an old man, a grandfather, a married man, had the stigmatist wounds of Christ. And he was coming to my area to pray for people. So I went to the meeting. I was early. I was the first one there. I sat in the front seat in the middle of the entire thing so I could be right where he would be. And I saw people go up to him when they had him pray for them. And he would pray for them, say something, they'd be on their way. And I was scared stiff that this man would know my skeletons. Is what I, I just, just knew he would because I wasn't perfect. I didn't want him to know all about what I was. I was a very sinful, bad man before I became a Christian and still struggled. 
And I was afraid he would know. And when he prayed over me, he didn't pray over me like he did the rest of them because I stayed for the whole thing. He paused. He put his pierced hands on my head and he prayed for me differently than he prayed for others. Now, if I was afraid of a man, a holy man, a man righteous, beyond belief, you could just feel the presence of God with him. Like I very, very seldom have ever felt around anybody else, any other preacher. And this man, I felt fear. I was troubled. He would know my, my skeletons, know I'm not perfect, know my past, find out I was a very wretched man. And what am I going to feel like when I'm in front of God, when I'm in front of Jesus like that? What am I going to feel like when I'm next to somebody so holy and so righteous who bore my sins on the cross and died for me? How am I going to feel seeing him come in the clouds when I have fear? Well, I'm not perfect, probably. Well, I'd be glad. Yes. But think about this. Daniel was troubled. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to be troubled. But it's okay. Because it's like dad's coming home. And you're a kid. Dad's coming home. There's a joy. And there's also like, oh, what have I done something wrong? And you're like hiding and looking to see if his arms are open to us. Are we okay? So Daniel was troubled. So shall we be. And are we in the end times? Oh, I most certainly think we are. I most certainly think we are really fastly approaching the day of Jesus' return. When will it happen? We're not told that. But we need to be prepared. We need to know the end time prophecies. We need to know what to do. If we're going to do what we're supposed to do. Now stay tuned because we're going to go through this verse by verse. So you can make up your own mind. You can make up your own mind. We're going to lay it all out. Now I do want to go through this. I want to go ahead and spell this out for you. In the Intermediate Bible we have the visions. Okay that is a masculine plural construct and body, my body, masculine singular, within, masculine singular construct, Daniel. Now that is a noun proper, masculine singular. I, he's speaking first person here. Now like the first verse of this chapter, he's speaking first person. I, in my spirit, first person, common and singular, was grieved. Now, this is a hippiel verb. Perfect third person feminine singular was grieved. He is reflecting on what happened when he wrote this. He's not writing this casually. He's reflecting on this. So he's even thinking about what it took place. Troubled me. This is a piel in perfect third person masculine plural. First person common singular. So to trouble me. To, it troubled me. Of my head. That is a masculine singular first person. Daniel is writing this first person. Now let's read this in the John Gill's commentary so we get the ancient commentary's thoughts on these things. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, or sheath, the soul being in the body as a sword in the scapboard, where it was cut and pierced as the word signifies and was wounded and distressed and grieved at the sight seen, not at the sight of the Son of Man and the glory and everlasting kingdom given to him, but of the four beasts, and especially the last and more particularly the little horn and the look and words and actions of that, as well as the awful scene of judgment presented to his view. And the visions of my head troubled me, the things he saw which appeared to his fancy as real things gave him a great deal of uneasiness and chiefly because he did not understand the meaning of them it was not so much the things themselves as ignorancy of them that cut him to the heart and grieved and troubled him 
for what is more so to an inquisitive mind that has, has got a hint of something great and useful to be known, but cannot as yet come to the knowledge of it. Unquote. That's John Gill. Remember, Daniel has seen several kingdoms. He has seen several rulers. He knows what goes on when they take place. And he knows what they can do to your life. Your comfortable life can come to an abrupt end. What day, what year, he did not know. When's this going to happen? What's going to become of him? What's going to become of his friends? What's going to become of Israel? He's troubled. He's grieved. He's seeking out what is going on. That is what he's doing. He's reflecting back as he writes this even to figure this out. Now, stay tuned. We're going further into this. We're going to see how this relates to Revelation. Tell your friends. Hit the subscribe button. If you like this, hit the like button. If you need prayer, put in the comments that you need prayer. If you have questions, do the same thing so that we can all answer. And stay tuned. Please continue to pray for me. That God will keep giving me wisdom and instruction. I'll continue doing this as much as I can. And I'm working a lot of hours right now, like 60 hours. I am a working minister during this time of the pandemic. So pray for me and ask God to give me strength and wisdom. And may God richly bless you as you go about your way. Meditate upon the word. Remember, go down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell button if you want to listen more on this and tell your friends also so you can make up your own mind on God's word presented to you. God bless.